it's cube time. Many have asked me to make actual cubing, and so here I am, delivering. But I will need to make some more starting material. So I am redoing part of the previous video, starting with the UV step. I'm also doing it a little bit differently, to see how the yield is affected. So if you haven't watched the previous video yet, it's best to watch it first, to get a better understanding. I will also not explain the mechanisms that I've already gone through before. So to get started, I set up a Schlang flask and drop in a stir bar. I then add 200 ml of acetonitrile as the solvent and move it to a stir plate. I add in 6.36 grams of the dye ketone I made in the previous video and 3.66 grams of benzophenone as the photosensitizer. This time I am trying out one equivalent of benzophenone instead of 0.5. When it is all dissolved, I blow nitrogen through the liquid for about 15 minutes, which will remove dissolved oxygen that can interfere with the reaction. When it is done, I stopper the flask. On the side, I have made the same solution in another flask at about twice the scale, which I will run in parallel to this one. I put them next to each other so that they both stir on the same stir plate. I then irradiate both flasks with two 395 nanometer UV LED lamps that have a combined power of 200 watt. Off screen, I have a strong fan blowing to keep the temperature around room temperature. I also covered it in aluminum foil, so I don't have to irradiate my eyes while I'm here, but I didn't show it. I then left it running for about 3 to 4 days. In the reaction, benzophenone becomes excited from the UV light and transfers an electron to the diketone molecule via dexter electron transfer. This gives the molecule enough energy to form the final product. As opposed to what I said in my last video, this transfer actually goes via the triplet state of benzophenone and not the singlet state, but the chemistry is the same. For more details on the first few reactions, it is best to first watch the other video. When it was done, we went from transparent and white chemistry to brown chemistry. I then removed the lamps and immediately distill off all of the solvent. Midway during the distillation, I combined both the reaction mixtures. When it is done, a brown solid is left behind, and I continue with the next reaction, without isolating the product. I add 110 ml of water and stir to suspend the solid, and then 110 ml of a 26% sodium hydroxide solution. I then attach a reflux condenser, and leave it to reflux overnight. In the reaction, the intermediate product reacts with sodium hydroxide, and is converted into cubane dicarboxylic acid through a pseudo Favorsky rearrangement, as opposed to a regular Favorsky rearrangement, as I mentioned in the previous video. In this case, the hydroxide ion will first directly attack the carbonyl carbon, instead of later in the reaction. When I come back, it has turned black, and I immediately filter it through a glass frit while it's still hot, to remove any insoluble impurities, but only a tiny bit of solid was left on the filter. Then to the filter, I add concentrated hydrochloric acid, until it is acidic and a precipitate forms. I then distill off most of the water, and I am left with a dark solid. I add a bunch of methanol to take up the product, while most of the salts will be insoluble. I shake it strongly to get everything to come loose, and then filter it all through a glass frit. I wash it out and down with more methanol, and we see a lot of salts are left behind on the filter. I then take the filter, and then distill off all of the methanol. But afterward, it is still wet from residual water, so I remove the short path and attach a gas adapter. I then pull a strong vacuum and heat it lightly to remove any remaining water and methanol. When it is done, a dry black solid is left behind. Then for the next reaction, I add in 300 ml of methanol as a solvent and reagent. And then 10 ml of 37% hydrochloric acid as the catalyst. I attach a reflux condenser and leave it to reflux overnight. In the reaction, cubane dicarboxylic acid undergoes a typical Fischer esterification with methanol where hydrochloric acid serves as the catalyst to produce dimethyl 14 cubane dicarboxylate. When it is done, it looks pretty much the same, but it should be finished. Then, while hot, I filter it through a glass fit again to remove insoluble impurities. But only a little bit is filtered out. The filter is still black, and I set it up for short path vacuum distillation to remove all of the methanol. A black solid is left behind, and I add some 95 to 5 DCM methanol mixture to dissolve the product. Not everything dissolves, and it seems to contain some salts that do not dissolve. Then like in the last video, I set it up for a quick column, which will separate the components based on their polarity. I force a bunch of alumin through, and collect the first bit, but this time, the yellow doesn't separate from the black stuff, like it did before. So, I am forced to also take some of the black stuff, to collect all of the product, since it should be in the solvent front. 
I then remove all of the solvents from what I collected. And like before, I recrystallize it from methanol. But this time, I do it three times. Since it looks like absolute shit. After recrystallizing it two times, it is an orange brown solid. And after the third time, it is light brown. The yield this time turned out to be 0.72 grams, or a sad 5%, which is half compared to the last time, which was already half compared to literature, and it is also brown this time. Anyhow, I will just use it like this to make cubane. So set up a flask in the heating mantle with a stir bar, and add in 22 mils of methanol. I then add in 1.43 mils of water, and 0.54 grams of sodium hydroxide. And last, all of the methyl ester I just made. I attach a condenser and then reflux the mixture for 5 hours. In the reaction, I am converting the methyl ester back to the diacid, since it is very difficult to properly isolate the diacid before converting it into the methyl ester. Therefore, it first has to be converted into the methyl ester and then afterward it can be converted back into the diacid, so that we can get it decently pure. When the reaction is finished, it has become a light brown color and I immediately distill off all of the methanol. When it is done, a brown solid is left behind, and I add 15 ml of water to dissolve it. I then stir it strongly, and dropwise add concentrated hydrochloric acid. Since the cubane diacid is now in its sodium salt form, it is very soluble in water, but we can convert it back into the free acid, by adding another strong acid. Since the free acid is not soluble in acidic solutions, it will precipitate out. I then set up a glass frit with a filter paper on top, and wet it with some water. I then filter the mixture to collect the precipitated free acid. I wash it with a tiny bit of water, and it becomes a bit lighter. I scraped off all of the residue and transferred it to a flask. I wash off the spatula with some water, and then set the flask in a heating mantle. I heat it lightly and pull a strong vacuum to remove all of the water. When that is done, a dry beige solid is left behind. Now for the next reaction, to the solid, I add 10 ml of thionyl chloride, and I attach a condenser. I then reflux this mixture for 4 hours. In the reaction, thionyl chloride converts the carboxylic acids into acid chlorides. First, the carbonyl double bond attacks the sulfur of thionyl chloride. At the same time, a free electron pair from the hydroxyl oxygen forms a double bond to make up for it. Following the attack, one pair of bond electrons from the sulfur oxygen bond moves onto the oxygen. This pair then moves back to form the double bond, and kicks off a chlorine atom instead, since it is a good leaving group. This chlorine ion then attacks the carbon, and the electron pair moves back onto the oxygen. In the following molecule, sulfur dioxide is kicked off, and the chlorine takes up the hydrogen to form hydrogen chloride. The OH bond electrons then form a carbonyl double bond, to produce the final acid chloride. This process happens on both sides, to produce two acid chlorides. When I come back, it is an orange brown liquid, and all of it should have been converted to the acid chloride. I then distill off all of the excess thionyl chloride, and afterward, I am left with a brownish solid. I then dissolve it all in about 50 ml of anhydrous chloroform, and set that aside for a second. Now for the next reaction, I will need the 2 mercapto pyridine N oxide sodium salt, but it comes in a solution in water, so I will have to carefully evaporate off the water and recrystallize it to get the pure salt. So I set up a crystallizing dish, and pour in some of the solution. I then just let it sit in the oven at 50C for about 2 days, with the occasional scraping. And when all of the water is gone, it is an off-white solid. I dissolve it all into a minimal amount of boiling ethanol, and then set it in the freezer to crystallize it out. But, nothing happened, even when I scraped the glass. So I tried to add some hexanes as an anti-solvent, and a little bit precipitates out, but it doesn't really work. I then just boiled off part of the solvent. And unsurprisingly, when the camera was off, it suddenly all precipitated out, which is also fine, I guess. I filtered it all through a glass fit with a filter paper on top, and washed it twice with some ethanol. Afterward, I am left with some white solid, which should be the pure 2 mercapto pyridine and oxide sodium salt, and I just left that to dry in the oven for a while, to get rid of all the ethanol. I then set up a flask with a funnel, and add in about 3 grams of the salt. I didn't measure how much exactly, since it is in excess anyway. To that, I add 50 mg of 4 dimethylamino pyridine, or DMAP for short. I then add 60 ml of anhydrous chloroform, and add a stir bar. I leave it to mix for a while, and then set it in a heating mantle. I then attach a condenser and a dropping funnel, and to the dropping funnel, I add the acid chloride that I made and dissolved in chloroform before. 
I heat the flask to a reflux, I connect the flask to a nitrogen cylinder, and blow nitrogen through the setup, but I don't think it matters too much. I then set up a lamp close by to the setup, and irradiate it strongly with regular light. When the camera is off, I put the light as close as possible. When it has come to reflux temperature, I dropwise add the acid chloride solution to the flask. In the reactions, the acid chlorides first react with the two mercaptor pyridine and oxide sodium salt to form two thiohydroxamate esters, catalyzed by DMAP. This thiohydroxamate ester is completely removed by the action of heat and visible light, where chloroform acts as both a hydrogen donor and solvent to produce cubane. In more detail, DMAP is a great nucleophile and easily attacks the carbonyl carbon. When attached, it is also a better electrophile than the acid chloride and therefore improves the reaction rate. So DMAP first attacks the carbonyl carbon, which causes chlorine to be kicked off, but it will stay around to form a salt, with the now charged to DMAP. The carbonyl carbon is then again attacked, but this time by the two mercaptor pyridine and oxide sodium salt, causing one of the double bond electrons to move onto the oxygen. In the following intermediate molecule, the double bond reforms and easily kicks off the DMAP, which can go on to catalyze the reaction further. The chloride ion takes up the sodium ion from the mercaptopyridine to form sodium chloride. The free electron pair from sulfur then forms a double bond, causing bonds to be moved around and the charged nitrogen to take up one electron pair to become neutral. The final result is a thiohydroxamate ester, which happens on both sides. This thiohydroxamate ester allows for decarboxylation and thus its complete removal in presence of a suitable hydrogen donor with heat and light. This process is a chain radical process that is initiated by light. For the sake of clarity and space, we will completely ignore one of the esters this time. Under irradiation from light, the molecule decarboxylates and releases CO2, while also forming two radicals, the cubane radical and the mercaptopyridine radical. Chloroform is a suitable hydrogen donor, from which these radicals can steal a hydrogen from. The cubane radical will form cubane after taking up a hydrogen, while the mercaptopyridine radical can also take up a hydrogen, which can later serve as a hydrogen donor as well. The chloroform radicals that are formed in this process can continue to react with the thiohydroxamate esters, quenching themselves and forming more cubane radicals. These cubane radicals continue to chain by taking up a hydrogen from chloroform, which can continue to react with more thiohydroxamate esters and forming more cubane radicals. When the addition is finished, the mixture is brown and I remove the dropping funnel. I leave it to reflux in the light for about 4 hours and then stop the reaction. I then immediately distill off all of the chloroform and afterward some liquid and solid crap is left behind. I first add 50 ml of pentane to dissolve the cubane. I mix it around and then add 50 ml of a 1 molar hydrochloric acid solution which will remove the DMAP and dissolve the salts. I mix it around to make sure everything comes loose. I then set up a separatory funnel and pour it all in. I remove the bottom water layer and then again add 50 ml of a 1 molar hydrochloric acid solution to make sure all of the DMAP is pulled out. I then wash it once with some water to pull out remaining salts. I separate the layers again and take the upper milky pentane layer. I add some anhydrous sodium sulfate to it to take up remaining water. I then set up a flask with a funnel plugged with some cotton and filter it all through to remove the sodium sulfate again. I wash it out and down twice with some more pentane. I then add a stir bar and boil off all of the pentane, which doesn't really distill and just fully vents out through the vacuum pump, since it's so volatile. When all the pentane is gone, a yellow liquid with some solid bits is left behind. I then dissolve that in a tiny bit of fresh pentane and set it up for column chromatography. I have filled the column with 90 grams of spherical silica gel and use 100% pentane as the eluent. I have to move quick because pentane is very volatile and will evaporate out of the silica and leave gas pockets. It's fine to use hexanes instead, but I'm just following the literature. I move the solvent level into the sand and then pipette all of the product mixture on top. I simply force all the pentane through and collect it as one big fraction. Since cubane is very non-polar, it will just race through the column in the solvent front. I then move the collected fraction to a flask in a heating mantle and again boil off all of the pentane. When most of it is gone, we already see a white solid forming on the sides of the flask. And when it's all gone, some white solid is left behind. The solid also sublimes very easily and already forms some crystals on the flask while it was sitting under mild vacuum at 50C. Anyhow, we are left with a beautiful white solid, which should be pure cubane, but I need to get it out of the flask properly. So I dissolve it all back into some pentane 
I then move all of the solution to a crystallizing dish and wash the flask a few times with a little bit of pentane. I now blast the dish with a heat gun so that all of the pentane evaporates away and I am again left with some white solid. I scrape it all off and then move it to a vial. The yield of cubane turned out to be 0.17 grams, which is 50%, assuming the conversion to the dye acid had a yield of 99%, like the literature. The cubane yield is a little bit lower than literature, but it still seems that the procedure is very reproducible, considering what I got. I will also let this get tested with NMR soon, so when I have the results, I will post about it. Anyhow, that was it. Thanks for watching. See ya.